in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Satan and the satanic kingdom, corporately speaking, have a singular assignment to fight and to frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. The key phrase here is any and all means. Sickness is part of the any and all means agenda. Please look up. Delay any and all means agenda causes everything you call destruction or the expressions of his wickedness is part of that any and all means agenda if satan can use an accident he will use it if he can use a plane crash he can he will use it if he can use your dying he will use it if he can use your being sick he will use it anything at all that will achieve that purpose he will use it any and all means is an attempt to describe the extent of his determination and desperation. Can I tell you this? When you want to study desperation, study Satan. A man who is already aware of his imminent defeat, and yet in that imminent defeat, he makes up his mind without fail that he will keep fighting. I hope you know that it's not only Christians that study the Bible. When Satan came to Jesus, at least we know how Jesus learned scripture in the flesh. He went to the temple to study. So how did Satan learn his own? All through scripture, everybody who understood scripture understood it by study. If man understood scripture, he understood by study. Even the word of God understood scripture as a human vessel by study. So how do you think Satan knew what was written? The only way to be approved is to study. Is that true? Satan alongside demons and evil spirits make up the satanic kingdom. And then they have a singular assignment to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any means. We conclude from these scriptures that satan has an operational system now i want to teach you we have looked a bit at the structure i don't want to go into the details hopefully in another teaching that relates to this we'll look at what principalities and powers and rulers are but all of these things just define three things listen in understanding maybe i should just put a word or two in understanding the structure of satan the structure of Satan is defined according to three things. Number one, geography. Number two, functions. Please understand this. Geography means location. There are spirits that reside in heavenly places. That is their jurisdiction. There are spirits that reside in specific geographic regions. For instance, Gadara, do not cast us out of this region. Are we together now? So in structuring the satanic kingdom, Satan used a number of factors. Number one is geography. The Bible shows us that these demons themselves, they honor geography. Number two, functions. For instance, you can read in your Bible certain spirits called the spirit of death. A lying spirit the spirit of infirmity when we're dealing with deliverance proper you will be learning that one of the ways we administer scriptural deliverance is not necessarily by knowing the name of every demon you can identify them by the operation 
are we together now yes in fact the Bible tells us one time when Jesus came and met an epileptic patient and the disciples were trying to cast out that demon and nothing happened the Bible says he rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit and then number three I gave you two number three ranking there are ranks there are ranks not only for angels but there are ranks even for demon spirits an example of that we see is in Mark chapter 5 we're coming there when Jesus met the madman in Gadara and he said what is your name he said my name is legion for we are many so there was a legion but it was not a legion that spoke there was one person who spoke on behalf of that legion do you agree that there is ranking number two Jesus himself was speaking about deliverance and he said when a spirit leaves a man he says it goes through dry regions is that true sourcing for a place of rest not finding any the Bible says it will say let me go back to my house and it will go back to his house who is the house now the human vessel or any material vessel and it will find it swept and clean and the Bible says that spirit will go back and bring seven others greater than it so there is ranking classification the structure of the demonic kingdom let me recap again number one is based on geography geography there is the prince of Persia the Bible identifies him with that geography and then number two based on what function infirmity sickness conditions and so on and so forth and then number three based on ranking let's go to the operational system I'm, I'm interested in this now the operational system we are looking at the structure and the operation of Satan and the demonic kingdom. Now we are looking at the operational system. Please look up. Every organization and indeed every kingdom has a modus operandi. That means they have a way that they operate. Are we in agreement with that? It is important to know how Satan operates. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Please, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that no spirit would distract you while you are listening to me. Because for some of you, you are going to be, God is going to be opening up to you. It is no mystery how Satan operates. The word of God in black and white, very clear terms, reveals to us how Satan operates. Two scriptures, Ephesians 6, 11. Does Satan have an operational system? Yes, sir. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. The word wiles there is the word schemes or devices. The wiles of the devil. Schemes of the devil. So Satan does not just attack. There is a system. There is a game plan. There is a destruction plan. He does not just stand up and move around and say, how do I destroy this family? There is a plan. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Let's read together if you can see it projected. One to read. Lest Satan should gain an advantage of us. Uh -huh. For we are not ignorant of his devices. 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 Strategies. now please play very close attention let's identify from scripture some of the things that satan and demons are involved with we are looking from the lens of scripture now we want to examine a few activities of satan and demon spirits the activities help us reveal the structure are we together i mean the the operation now when you look at what Satan does, you also find in what he does, how he does it. Are we learning? I'll be giving you a few scriptures. Number one, 
Satan and demons fight. Write it down. The Bible shows us that Satan and even demon spirits that they fight. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. And the Bible says the dragon fought and his angels fought. So it is part of Satan's character and it is part of Satan's modus operandi to fight. Two, Satan hinders or he resists. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Satan resists, demons resist. He says, wherefore we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Who hindered them? Satan, a spirit, can hinder men. If Satan can hinder an apostle, it means he can try to hinder breakthrough, he can try to hinder lifting. Anything that is coming to you for your advantage, it is possible for Satan to try to hinder it. Number three, Satan and demons also, they steal, they kill, and they destroy. John 10.10 10. Everything that applies to Satan also applies to demon spirits. Satan and indeed demon spirits kill, they steal, they kill, and they destroy. John 10.10 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal. Most serious armed robbers go in groups. Are we together? When they want to rob, say, a bank, you don't find an individual, no matter how strong. It's usually a coordinated activity. The Bible says he cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So Satan steals. What does he steal? Anything at all. What does he kill? Everyone and everything. Next activity that reveals the modus operandi of Satan. Are you ready? Satan and demons lie. Start that one. John, okay, let me give you one more scripture about stealing, killing, and destroying. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 19. Please write it down. Matthew 13 and verse 19. The Bible lets us know that Satan is a thief. Jesus was teaching this in the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, he says, then cometh the wicked one, another word for Satan, and catcheth away that which, which was sown in his heart. Can you imagine how Satan steals? He can steal and even enter your heart. Your heart that a doctor needs to use knife to open it. Satan can enter and steal. Or your spirit or whatever it is. He can steal anything. No wonder he can put a disease in your body without surgery. No wonder he can put anything there and he can carry something that was good. But in the name of Jesus Christ, he's finally meeting his resistance forever. Yeah. Next point. Satan and demons lie. John 8, 44. Satan, by his consistency of lying, earned himself a title that Jesus himself acknowledged as the father of You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, the lust of your father, ye will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he is in his default state. That means when Satan feels a lie, there's no point feeling guilty. That's who he is. There are Yoruba people who speak Yoruba and English and Hausa and other tribes. But when you are speaking your local dialect, you speak it with confidence and joy. Here's what the Bible is telling you. You ever doubted Satan's language? What tribe is he? That's it right there. The Bible says that Satan, when he speaketh a lie, Jesus is talking now. 
he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it the word father there is the same word that is used towards god abba an originator and a defender of a cause that means you it came from you and you guard it to make sure it remains ah. <laughs> the father of lies i told you to start that one you will soon know why next point very quickly satan is a master of falsehood he disguises himself he uses the strategy of disguise or falsehood the strategy of disguise or falsehood second corinthians 11 and verse 14 satan disguises himself are you ready and no marvel he says for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light one of the strategies of satan is that he can use the tool of falsehood he can disguise himself next satan deceives start that one please satan deceives we're studying the modus operandi of satan satan deceives second corinthians 11 and verse 3 satan deceives he's a master deceiver are you learning tonight but i fear less by any means as the serpent beguiled eve the word there is deceived he beguiled eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in christ you know what paul is saying paul is saying that satan employed a strategy and deceived eve you know i taught you that um adam was not deceived adam fell because of love it was eve that was deceived are we together absolutely it's in your bible we're going to read that there is adam was not deceived it was eve that fell eve was deceived and adam followed her because he loved her the second adam who is jesus was he deceived he came willingly because he loved his eve the church the same pattern you see so adam adam was not deceived it was eve that was deceived no 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 it doesn't listen listen this i i already know i know what is in your heart and okay let me show you first timothy 2, 2 and verse 14. if you think first timothy 2 14 14 1 Timothy 2 and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Women fall because of deception. Men fall because of love. So next time you say you are falling in love, ask yourself, must you fall? The in love is not the issue. It's the fact that must you... <laughs> Let's get back to our discussion. We're discussing something very serious tonight. I reject distraction in Jesus' name. Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are we learning? Revelations 12 and verse 9. One last scripture that talks about the extent of his deception. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Can you imagine that? He deceives the... Finally, 
we see from scripture that satan is an accuser the bible calls him the accuser of the brethren he does not just accuse anyhow he looks for brethren the accuser of the brethren We are identifying some of the activities of Satan and demons to be able to help us to piece out by the intelligence of the spirit a modus operandi, a structure. Now please write this. Of all the strategies and operations of Satan, of all the strategies and the operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception of all the strategies and operations of satan the most pronounced in the bible is deception can you imagine that that of the many strategies that we see that satan deploys the most pronounced based on scripture is deception please say deception one more time say deception write this down what does it mean to deceive we are now building an understanding on the operation of satan demons and the dark kingdom what does it mean to deceive are you ready to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true comma usually for personal gain or to take advantage of i'll take it again to deceive means to deliberately underline the word deliberately please to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true comma usually for personal gain or to take advantage of we're defining deception now that to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is a lie it's not true for your personal gain the gain of the deceiver or so that the deceiver can take advantage of the deceived of all the operations of Satan, the most pronounced according to scripture is deception. That means he is a master. He has mastered the art of making people believe what is a lie. And by causing them to believe it, he can take advantage of them. Lest Satan should take advantage of us because we are not ignorant that he is a deceiver and that the only way he takes advantage of believers is when he brings you to a point where you believe and are convicted in something that is not true powerful write this down are you learning deception which is the same thing as falsehood i want to define it for you now deception which is the same thing as falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead comma hide the truth comma or promote a false belief or idea i'll take it again deception which is the same thing as falsehood deception is a statement or action is a statement or action that is intended to mislead comma hide the truth comma or promote a false belief or idea that's the definition of deception a statement or action that is intended to mislead hide the truth or promote a false belief or idea full stop you may want to add this it is often done for personal gain 
deception or falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead hide the truth promote a false belief or idea full stop it is often done for personal gain isn't this powerful that the chiefest strategy of satan as far as carrying out his agenda is in the midst of all of these activities that we, we listed from scripture that the greatest and the most pronounced is deception write this down please about deception very important point deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth wow deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth it's impossible for deception to happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth because the assignment of the deceiver is to make the deceived to not understand or not receive the truth that means for you to be a deceiver the qualification to be a deceiver is that you must have access to the truth deception cannot happen until the deceiver in this case satan is aware of the truth so is it true that satan knows that jesus is lord is it true that jesus that satan knows that there is victory given to the saints is it true that he knows that there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved is it true that satan knows that jesus is now resurrected holding the keys of life is it true that satan knows that jesus gave us the authority over him no wonder he does his ministry of deception so well because the basis of deception is that you must know the truth is someone learning now it is impossible for a deceiver to be a deceiver in ignorance because a deceiver the character of deception is that the very act of deception is done intentionally are we learning now let's take a structured biblical study i wanted to read a few scriptures that talk about deception but we'll jump it for the sake of time i want us to take one case study we are studying now how satan operates are you ready we want to take one bible story and then we'll examine it closely and i taught you here that theologically speaking there is what we call the law of first mention that every time you want to study a subject a thought or an idea your first assignment is to go to where it was first referenced in scripture and understand the contextual explanation or usage that becomes your interpretation everywhere that word or that thought is used is that true so we'll go to genesis but before then let's look at two or three scriptures john 8 44 john 8 44 let's start from where we left off jesus is speaking now and jesus himself said a few things that are very interesting about the devil ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do he was a murderer when he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth do you know what this means jesus did not say he was ignorant of the truth he says he refused to abide to live in the truth he willfully came out of that realm of truth he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it keep that scripture second corinthians 11 3 second corinthians 11 3 but i fear apostle paul is speaking to the church in corinth lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve so apostle paul here is using a story to show us the deception of satan 
are you seeing where paul is leading us to now paul is saying if you want to study the deception of satan study what happened with satan and eve in the garden of eden because he's saying satan will still use that strategy against you are you seeing now he's saying just as satan beguiled eve through subtlety he will also come to you and do something to you the same way he worked with eve do you know what he's saying he's saying when it has to do with that strategy it is his master strategy he will not change it you study satan's operation by studying what happened between him and eve First Timothy 2 and verse 13, where you read and laughed. Now I hope you don't laugh again because we're getting into a very serious discussion now. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Do we believe this? Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Journey with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of the beginnings and see what exactly happened there. Genesis chapter 3. Story, story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, now when you read this, you will think it's just something that happened immediately in a matter of minutes. The Bible is written in summary and so it does not give us the, the depth of the discussion because this is not just something that happened within minutes. I told you that in studying scripture, you have to use the mind of literature, you have to use the mind of a historian, you have to use the mind of an archaeologist and then you have to use the understanding of a spiritual man. These are the four components you need to thoroughly study scripture. If all you have is the mind of a spiritual man, as powerful as that is, you will not really understand the Bible because the Bible has a literature component, the Bible has a historical component, the Bible has an archaeological component, and then it has largely a spiritual component. Are we learning? Now watch carefully, please. We are studying Satan now. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Now please listen carefully. Go back to verse 1. Do you know why Satan came to the woman directly to talk to her? It's not because she was female. Mm -mm. There was something about the structure of dominion. Are you getting the point now? That when God gave man dominion, in the Garden of Eden it was very clear that even though Adam and Eve are spirits, had dominion but based on that earthly structure within the family context in the garden adam and man was head over her are we together now and satan would not come directly and attack the head but he knew that there was a connection between adam and eve there was something he understood that he would not be able to easily deceive adam but he knew that based on that structure there is a connection between Adam and Eve and the connection is love and that genuine love is love that comes with sacrifice so he didn't need to deal with the man he was not dealing with the man simply because he knew that once he got the woman the love the man had for the woman would be why he would fall so he didn't have to waste his time there <laughs> are you getting the idea now that if I can get Eve you will be seeing it that when Eve ate, she gave her husband what you call eating now. For the sake of this discussion, we'll still keep it at that. Most people think she just ate and called him and said, Sweetheart, where are you? You will find out in the Bible he was standing right there with her. He fell because of love. The Bible says Satan came and met the woman. <clears throat> now watch this. Notice the first thing, his conversation with the woman. Yea, had God said. Can you imagine? The beginning of his discussion mentioned God. 
Satan, look at the structure of his deception. Have God said. That means I told you that deception cannot work until what is true is known. Are you seeing the pattern here now? Satan wanted all I need to know is what God told you. That is the raw material for my fabricating my deception. That means Satan has no business coming to your life until God speaks. The moment God speaks, Satan says, now I have something to work with. What did God tell you about your child? What did God tell you about your destiny? What did God tell you about your ministry? Deception is not possible until there is an awareness of the truth. In this case, what God said. Because everything God says is yea and amen. Let God be true and all men liars. Are we learning? And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden of Eden? Are you noticing that there's something with that statement? He was doing something to the truth. When I tell you truth can kill, believe me, it's not only a lie that kills. He did something that forced her to defend what God said. Now the woman, verse 2. The woman said, Satan, you didn't get that right. Let me correct you. This is what he said. We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. And he was listening. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Satan said, thank you. Now, let me show you that I have an advantage of age over you. Verse 4. Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Are we learning how Satan operates now? When Satan comes to you, the raw material for his attack is what God has said. And... The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Are you seeing now? Verse, do you know what he was doing to her here? He was shaking the basis for her obedience. That means now that I know what God has said, I know that faith is obedience. My next assignment is to do something to you. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as the gods, knowing good and evil. Satan was saying, God is so insecure, there is something he's hiding from you. And that is why he vetted out his insecurity by putting a strict rule. Don't mind him. Trust me, there is something I know. When you eat this, your eyes will be opened and you will be like him, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. When the woman saw. Everybody say, when the woman saw. Hmm. The discussion started by saying, but by the time we get to this point, she has perceived Saw there does not just mean eyes. She has conceived as a reality. The woman did not fall by eating the fruit. Eating the fruit was proof she had fallen. This was where the fall started. Perception. Don't think he just came to her one day and spoke to her. No. That's why I told you the Bible is written in summary. You, you need to use, you don't come like that in one day and convince someone. Go and read your Bible. The Bible spoke about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. How many times did she come to him? Frequently. J Judas Iscariot. It was not just once they met him and said, deceive, deceive Jesus. It's within the character of Satan to be consistent. The same way you don't come and most times you don't meet a woman once and say, marry me. And then you have to come. Again. That structure. Satan was patient and came. And he said... When the woman finally saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the... That's not normal seeing, my brothers and sisters. Mm -mm. 
there is a kind of seeing that had attacked her spirit are we together the bible says the tree to be desired look at all this look at these emotional expressions it's more than just seeing a tree she was always looking at the tree what did she now see the bible says she took off the fruit thereof and did eat maybe in another time as god helps us i will really explain to you what it really means the concept of the tree and the fruit but so that i don't disrupt the flow of what we're doing we'll just accept it as eating but you see the concept of eating and the tree these are these are prophetic expressions it may not necessarily mean tree and fruit but it does not interrupt our understanding even if we understand it that way so we'll continue the bible says she did eat please everybody read the remaining part and gave also unto her husband with her is it in your bible what did he do did he throw it she ate now watch what happened do you know that when she ate there was no effect it was when he ate that something happened Because the sheep only scatters when you strike the shepherd. She ate and she gave him. Ate from deception, he ate from love. In any case, they ate. That's the bottom line. And then the Bible says the moment that happened, notice Satan stopped talking to them. It was over. You thought that after eating, you say, now, how do you feel? That is the structure of deception now that he had achieved his goal he will now leave them with god and he says now off i go the bible says the eyes of them were open did he tell them something like that will happen absolutely he said your eye will open but they did not understand what he meant the bible says and they knew now notice what happened here there was already a disruption in the way God arranged the spirit of a man because the way God designed man was the spirit of a man was supposed to have the highest level of ascendance in direct touch with the spirit of God. The body would barely be an instrument of execution. Are we together? The mind that consists of the will, the emotion and the intellect would midwife the spirit and the body. These are just the platforms for the spirit to be able to operate with the body. And now we see that something is wrong. You can see that the soul came alive. The eyes of them were open and they knew they were naked. You see shame, attributes of emotions. They sowed fig leaves and made aprons. They ran away. God is about to speak. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Everybody say fear. fear. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Should you run away from the presence of the Lord? But now we see something happening to them. Are you seeing the way Satan works? He did not have to keep talking. The destruction can happen whether he's there or not. It's a programming. He has done something to them. The same way Satan can come and do something to a village. And after 30 years, it is still working. Whether he supervises or not. It's like a software. Now, he left these people. The next time we hear him talking was in answer to a question God asked him. Left the woman. Deception. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam. Are you seeing how God respected his own structure? When he came, he never spoke to the woman until man gave him permission to speak to the woman. When he came, he spoke to the man who had that seat of authority and dominion. Adam, you are the one I put alongside your wife. What has happened? I look spiritually and I don't see you sitting on that throne of dominion again. When he said, Adam, where art thou? God, God speaks spiritually. There was a position that you could see 
you could look down to the earth and know that the man in charge is seated there it is that same position that the demon said jesus i know paul i know when we look in the spirit we all those who have dominion we see that position where are you adam where are you you are lost adam who shifted you without pushing you who shifted you who who gained mastery over you and made you to move fear off you left the place of power and yet force was not used on you that is the power of deception I overcame Hallelujah He won the victory Hallelujah I overcame Hallelujah I overcame Hallelujah Listen are you see what satan did they thought it was just a conversation they did not understand the spiritual implication adam i checked the place of authority and you are not there where are you this is a tragedy that came upon men you need to learn this because he's coming and he will use the same thing remember the structure what did god say God did not mean what he would say and he will keep coming to you every day he knows that persistence is powerful Satan does not speak once let me tell you how he speaks he uses words he uses men he uses things he uses pain he's still the one speaking he will employ everything until he shifts you from that place there is a place where when you stand Adam now let me teach you something powerful for as long as man did not cooperate with satan satan looked powerless he was with them and could not touch them he was with them and could not touch them the power of satan is in your falling for his deception there was absolutely nothing he could do to adam and eve the best he could do was speak he had to depend on their seeing and their participating with his lies. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.